Wusa. Wusa. Sorry, yeah, we can start this thing and then. That would be great, since we've been recording for 13 minutes so far. We have? Holy sh- Welcome to Maker's Hustle, the podcast about turning your passion into a profession. This is episode 11 for Monday, September 19th, 2016. I'm your host, Bill Lavolsi, and here are my co-hosts, Amy Davis-Roth. Hey, Amy. Hey, guys. How's it going? Pretty good. And Jeffrey Moore. Hey, Jeff. How's it going, everybody? All right. How come I didn't get a how's it going back? Like, like It's going real good, Jeff. Like, it's going real good. Like, Amy asked the fans, and Bill <laughs> responded... <laughs> I just tried to say hello to everybody and Bill didn't respond. So It's because I'm a terrible person, Jeff. Oh I thought you would have figured that out by okay. now. All right. So I want to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. David Thompson, The Maker Monkey, Eric Wright, Pat Lapp, a.k.a. Le Pic Bois, <laughs> Ian McKay, Brian Prusa, Johnny Scari, Jim Bashirs, and Scott Hahn. In case you didn't notice, that's a lot of new names. A so thank you names. all very much for supporting the show. We just reached our first goal, which means we can now do the show without actually losing money every week. So thank Yay! you very much for that. Yay, round of applause, everybody. Go, Thanks, go, go, everyone. Go, go. Way to go. So exciting. If you would like to support the show, check us out at patreon.com slash makershustle. We actually just released our first piece of bonus content, which is a blooper reel from episodes one through six. And I'm not just saying this because I was in it. It's pretty funny. It is funny. It's very funny. It's funny enough that we were looking for ways to release it to everybody without them having to pay for it. But mm. sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you gotta keep gotta keep those Patreon supporters satisfied. Yeah. Now, before we get into what we're working on this week, I want to take a moment to thank Bill Lutz for the kind words on last week's Reclaimed Audio podcast. If you don't already listen, you should check it out. Their podcast is about reclaimed material, upcycling, and just making things while keeping the, the planet in mind. It's a very cool show, so you should check that out. Environmentally Absolutely. conscious upcycling. I yes. love it. I love it's it. I gotta stuff. check it out. Yes, and uh, before we get into it also, I think we should thank everybody who kind of reaches out to us in the meantime, in between time episodes. Um, I've had a couple of people reach out to me asking me questions, giving us a little bit of feedback. Actually, a couple of people gave me great ideas um, on the cart that I wanted to develop. So, you know, just thank you to everybody who not only supports us through Patreon or supports us through giving us different views, but also just supports us and reaches out to us and tells us whatever it is that we're doing is appreciated. Yeah. yeah. So nice. I've been getting a lot of that, too, Jeff. I've been getting just a lot of uh, Facebook messages yeah. and tweets. And it's I look at my phone and I'm like, that's got to be wrong. There cannot be that many Twitter notifications, but there are. Aww. Even something as small as like somebody reached out to me asking me about what are the type of servos that I use and where did I order them? And, you know, like as I was saying it, it was a small part of what I was saying and I didn't think too much of it. But just seeing that people are interested in the small things that we talk about is very intriguing and very, uh, you know, motivating. Yeah. And I know uh, I don't just speak for myself when I say that we love that kind of feedback. Oh, I, I also it. know that our audience is actually growing really quickly. So if this is your first week listening to the show, first of all, welcome. And we're glad to have you on board, and we would love to hear your feedback. We'll Absolutely. have our contact details at the end, so stick around. Yeah, I'm going to save my shout-out for a really great listener for our media recommendations at the end. So I'm not going to say anything else, but I, too, do appreciate the really great feedback we've been getting. Thanks, yeah. everyone. All right. So what's everybody working on this week? Bill, how about you start? <laughs> okay, I'll start. <laughs> he, looked, he looked like he wanted somebody to say something. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. Just, Just throwing, throwing it, out, it there. out there, yeah. So like I mentioned last week, my freelance writing is starting to take off. And rather than talk about who I'm working for, I want to talk about how this is changing the way that I work. Because I've been a writer for a very long time, but I previously, I worked for a company. I received a salary, you know, so I was working on whatever project my boss told me to work on. And now I'm working for a whole bunch of different clients at the same time, which is making me better at scheduling and time management. And it's also helping me to improve my customer service skills, which is actually really nice. I've learned that you can give people bad news and they won't get mad at you for it because you, you've kept expectations in line with reality and it doesn't come as a surprise. So that kind of thing, just being open and honest with people and, and communicating constantly is a really good way to have all of your customers. Even if you have to give them bad news, it's a good way to have them still like you afterwards. So that's what I'm doing this week. Amy, how about you? I am also doing writer-related work. Ooh, 
for quite a while. I wrote for a blog called Skeptic, and I still manage the network's art site. So I also understand the thrills and highs and lows of freelance writing. But what I've decided to do now, and I've mentioned it before, is I'm working on my own illustrated coloring book type of graphic novel type thing. It's sort of a crossover. It's a little story that you can color if you want to. And so this week I have been working with my designer that I hired to lay out the book, and she is helping me a lot. She's helping me basically find like holes in the story where I need new illustrations. So I'm working on like a series of about five more illustrations for the book, and in the meantime I'm coloring like the color for the cover and for the back because everything else is going to be black and white so you can color it if you want but there has to be some colored images already so we're doing some mock-ups for the front and the back and I've been coloring in some of my illustrations just for fun to give as samples to people and I'm just having a really great time sort of finishing up this book it's the first book that I've ever published and so I'm really excited about it and I'm trying to do a really good job so I'm trying not to rush it like I wanted to have it out by Christmas but I'm not positive if I'm going to make that deadline but regardless I'm going to have a really 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 cute project when I'm done so I'm excited about it and I'm drawing lots of new robots and it's really fun so that's what I'm doing books are big projects I know it's it's like overwhelming and exciting at the same time because I've never I'm self-publishing this like I don't have a publisher backing me or anything but in the true maker spirit I'm DIYing this because I've always wanted to have a little book and I'm I'm having so much fun doing it I just want to make sure that I don't rush it too much and I'm realizing now that I need like five probably five illustrations to really make it cohesive as a little story so it's coming along really great though I can't wait to show it to everyone that is super cool I'm excited for you thanks Jeff how about you well um I can't be consistent with you guys because I haven't nobody wants me to write for them and nor (laughs) should you want me to write for you because (laughs) I'm not that good of a writer but um what I've been working on is twofold first I'm still trying to get this wireless communicate communication I'm sorry thing going. It's a lot harder, harder. I don't know why my tongue is all tied right now. Um, It's a lot harder than I thought it would be. Um, I got the controller down. I've been taking little steps. So starting off with, you know, basic control of sensors, basic control of, of servos, then moving up to putting those things all together at the same time. So I'm working on that. And then also I am preparing to finalize the design so that I can send them out to be laser cut. Because I, since I don't have a laser cutter, I actually have to pay for that, which sucks. I want to buy my own laser cutter, but money's a little tight right now. So I'm trying to finish up these designs so that I, I can get them laser cut. I got to send the designs out, have them proofed, and then have the product sent back to me all by next week, Friday, so that I can have the following week to put everything together so that I'm ready to go for the Maker's Fair, which is only two weeks away, which is stressing me out. It's stressing me out too, you guys. (laughs) I'm stressed all the way out. I'm I'm really excited. If it was to happen tomorrow, I'd be screwed. I'd be sitting around at home. I'd be walking around with Bill. (laughs) Jeff, oh my gosh, we have to be there so early. Yeah, um, I know. That first day, you know that, right? Because setup is, for me, at like, something like 8 30 a.m oh my gosh we're not gonna get any sleep so anyone that meets me well, I, at, at <laughs> eight o'clock there. in the morning i'll be dropping you off and coming back home to sleep and that then is like, <laughs> to me that's like what eight it's like yeah, that's 5 a.m that's crazy that's great <laughs> and I, the, the, the thing is i think most people kind of mitigate that by setting up the day before but since that's not what we're trying to do we just we have can't. to suck it up and do it I can't. I got to fly in. I'm not. No, I know. I know. I'm just saying like like 10. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just saying like it's this is the hand that we dealt ourselves. I know. Because of the things that we got going on. But it is. I I know. I'll fly in late the night before. This is a great idea. Oh, I have to. Like I have no choice. I can't afford to pay for a dog sitter for more. Oh, yeah. I mean, like I can't be gone that long because it costs me money every time I leave. Hmm. Because, you know, my husband has a job, like a regular job. And this is, I guess we're sort of already leading into what this episode is about, mm. right? Work yeah. life balance. Isn't I mean, it times like this where you wish you had cats? <laughs> yes! Except I'm super allergic to cats. Oh, but, well, yeah. yeah. I know. Having dogs is like having Ooh, two-year-olds. You know, it would be time. a great idea. And I believe I saw this somewhere, but this gives me a great... This is where inspiration just happens to me. Like, 
some type of automated dog feeder slash walker slash take right. care of her. Right, but it also has to monitor it, make sure it doesn't mm-hmm, get sick, absolutely. make sure it's okay. It has to talk to it, tell it that it's good. Yeah. If they're like, I feel like there's something out there for that. It's got to be, right? Right. It's Where called a dog like, sitter. Skype it. You can <laughs> Skype in. On, and I'm sure that. somebody's going to, if you know, if you're listening to this and you know of a product, please send it to us so that we can shout it out or shout you out for shouting it out oh, on the next oh, episode. Drop cam, you guys. I'm already shouting it out because if you have a drop cam cam security camera in your house, which I happen to have, it you can talk through it. So you can have it on your iPad. You can monitor your house. You can look through it and you can talk through it. So I can see like the whole inside of my house when I'm out of town and I can be like, yo, rock it. Get off the couch. <laughs> I mean, although he's allowed to be on the couch. So if somebody breaks into your house, you can say, hey, what are you doing here? You're like, hey, you. Get out of my I house. I can't swear on this podcast, but get the F out of my house. Yeah. <laughs> I and see I you taking like, that. Gotcha. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> this is already uploaded to the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Calling 911. Well, I can't miss a transition like that so let's get into this week's topic (laughs) this week what we're talking about is well we called it work hustle balance but it's really work life balance it's kind of both so you've probably heard the phrase work life balance before Um, but when your life is devoted to building your own business that kind of changes things a bit so we're going to talk about what it's like to have a day job and a side hustle and then we'll talk a little bit about maybe when or if you should quit that day job to devote yourself to your hustle full time, and then maybe some of the issues that come up. So since Jeff is the only person on this podcast who has a day job and a side hustle, I think he gets to go first. Let's see. Here's the thing. You Mm. asked again three questions and I'm lost. So I'll just talk. (laughs) I did not ask any questions. So (laughs) I introduced (laughs) the topic. Like I'm somewhere stuck in between when should you quit? Okay, Jeff. Let's ask Jeff. Jeff. But I'll... I'll, Let me, let, me, let me slow I'll this go. down slow for this you. Down for I'm going to back yes. this up a step for Jeff. Jeff, what is it like to have a day job it's terrible. and like three different side it's hustles terrible. going? It's terrible. Right. I'm stressed out. My wife is stressed out because I'm stressed out. It's, a, it's horrible. No, Tell but me all about it. Um, I think you have to preface this conversation and think about what's important. And I'm not saying that I'm an expert on this. I'm not even saying that I do this all the time. But I think that you have to start off by saying what is important, whether it's your relationship, whether it's yourself, you know, things other than the work that you do. Because if you don't manage it well, it will affect your relationships. And then those relationships are going to affect your work. So definitely the number one rule, take care of yourself, take care of your family, your friend. Well, if your friends falls into that family category and take care of your significant other first, that's the number one rule of time management. Then after you've done that, I think the most effective way to split up your time is by scheduling things and having some type of system in place that will either keep you on task or allow you to move from one task to the other without, you know, too much fall off in the quality of the work that you do. So I'll give you an example. I go to work nine to five. I already know by six o'clock, that's when I can start to think about work. Between five and six, I'm still trying to recover from work and trying to get myself in gear for after work work. Right. Yeah. And then the next thing that I start to do is think about what is it that I need to do today? Specifically today, I set like daily goals or daily things that I have to accomplish. And so like for right now, when we finish up this podcast, I know that the thing that I struggled with yesterday for getting this wireless communication. I told myself tomorrow I have to get it done because if I don't, then that's going to mess me up for the things that I have to do after that. So it doesn't matter what time I go to sleep tonight. Tonight, I have to finish up making this thing happen. I have specific things that I know that I need to do, and that allows me to stay on task. And if I finish it early, then it allows me to either take a break, stop and do something completely different or move on and start the next thing that will kind of give me a little bit of time off of tomorrow. Um, but I set daily goals for myself every day. And I, I have a whiteboard up in my apartment. My wife hates it, but it is what it is. And that allows me to write down what specifically I need to do either across the day, across the week, before Maker's Fair, how I have to have all those things done. And that kind of just helps me stay focused. Because if I don't 
if I don't do that, then I'm a hot mess and I get nothing done. And it's, ter- it's terrible for me. I think that's brilliant. I think that scheduling is super important. In fact, one of my mottos is always do something today to make your business better tomorrow. And it can be just about anything. But yeah, work-life balance is very difficult. And the way you described it is absolutely perfect. And I would just like to say that my friend Will just put a whiteboard in his bathroom <laughs> and he has titled it Shower Ideas. And while he's showering now, if he comes oh. up with a really good idea, he oh. just hops out and he writes it down. Because I mean, even like when it's sort of like your you time to relax and and, and be, you know, in your own head and you come up with really good ideas in the shower. Or That's right a beautiful idea. I'm actually about <laughs> to do that. Yeah, right. I'm about so, to do that. And it's so crazy on. because for me, I never turn my brain off. And it's annoying most of the time. But a lot of the time, if I'm just laying in bed and I'm either I have a great idea and I start to Google it, then I either hop out of bed or and start to work on it because I've done that a few times. Or, you know, I just make a little note of it. But those ideas come at you out of nowhere. Right. And, you know, making sure that you don't forget those ideas and trying to incorporate them later. That's that's crucial. That's a huge part because you might have a breakthrough when you're not even working on something. So how do you get that breakthrough and bring it back to the work that you're doing? Yeah. That's when I have most of my breakthroughs yeah. is when I'm not working on something. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, you know, I can get good productive work done, but then it's when you're in the shower, when you're driving somewhere and your mind is kind of doing whatever it's doing, or, you know, you're laying in bed at the end of the day, but that's when stuff comes to you because your brain is kind of processing all the stuff that happened earlier. Yeah. I actually, I do a couple of different things just relating to not forgetting ideas. I try to keep like a piece of paper or something next to the bed and just a pencil. So if I have an idea, I'll just, I can just scribble it down, but I don't have to get out of bed. Cause if I get out of bed, I'll be up until five in the morning. You know, <laughs> if the sun's coming up, that's bad. Yeah. The other thing that I do is if I'm in the car, I don't want to be writing something while trying to drive the car. So I have a little voice recorder from mm-hmm. when I was uh, in college. So it's really old and it doesn't work very well. It still records in like Windows Media, I think. So this is pretty much all that I use it for. But I just keep it there in the car with a fresh battery in it. And if I have an idea, I can just hit record, like dictate my idea and then turn it back off again. Mm. Oh and that way I'm not God. using my phone. I'm not you know, going to get pulled over and given a ticket because the cops think I'm texting. But I get my idea down. Do you have an iPhone, Bill? Yes, I do. Just I know it has voice memos. Yes, However, Siri. the cops here, if they see a phone anywhere near your hand, they will mess you up. Are they worse than like New York State cops? I'm listening. I don't know. <laughs> yes, I know Siri exists. Hi, Siri. Remind me to remind Bill tomorrow to use his iPhone for, for notes. I just said four twice. See, I don't think she gets it. <laughs> Okay, I'll remind you. Oh, yeah, she did. She said, okay, I'll remind you. Uh, Thank you, Siri. I don't think that I utilize, uh, you know, sure. those. <laughs> she said, I'm not sure. I don't think that I utilize um, those things as much as I, as I should. Yeah. Half the time, like most times I have a great idea and I forget about it. And I'm mad at myself later. Like, I know I mentioned earlier that I, I sometimes do it in bed, but half the time, it's when I'm falling asleep. Like if I do put it in my phone, that was because it was a good day. Um, and if I got up to work on it, it was because I wasn't going to sleep anyway. I was just laying in bed. But most of the time, like whether I'm in the shower on the toilet, well, I said on the toilet, but we have great ideas on the toilet as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, some of my best ideas happened on the toilet. But I feel like I, I do a lot of great ideas. I come up with ideas and I forget about them because I'm not proactive enough to write them down. But taking that back to uh, time management, <laughs> bringing it back to time management. Yeah, you guys, seriously, utilize technology of today and talk to your phones. I mean, you don't even need to write lists anymore. I know I do. I like to write lists. I really, really do. I like to draw pictures of lists even because I'm obsessive art person. But you can just like talk to your phones now and it will save you a lot of time. Yeah. All right. Well, one thing I did want to bring up was that, Jeff, you talked about you have like a goal for the day and, Mm -hmm. you know, you said, I'm not going to sleep until I finish this. Yes. And if you finish it early, then that's great. Well, I've found that I almost never finish things early. Mm. And I've also found that if I say, okay, I have to do these three things today, I'll get like two of them done. Mm. So it's this constant state of feeling like I'm screwing it up. Mm. So what I do instead is I try to... Like on on a macro scale, like over the week, I have to get these things done this week. I don't say on Monday I got to do this, on Tuesday I got to do this, because if I do that, 
even if I do get Monday's things done early, I won't start working on Tuesday's things because in my head that's in like a different box or something. Yeah, I think for me, the the hardest part about time management and maybe you guys have to deal with this and struggle with this a little bit more than I do. But I feel like the hardest part about time management for me is the fact that I'm working in my house. Oh, yeah. And it's the worst. I like I, it's so hard. The biggest struggle is I watch cartoons as I work. So I'm already losing time. And I, I resign myself because I can't focus without it. Um, but the fact that I know I can take a nap in the middle of <laughs> In the middle of work, like I'll tell myself, OK, I've got this done. All right. Let me just take a 15, 20 minute nap. That 20 minutes turns into an hour. Next thing you know, two hours. And then I wake up and then I'm tight that I only have a few hours left in the day before I have to go to bed and get up for work in the morning. But work managing my time is only as successful as my commitment to get work done. And that's why I have to really set those daily goals, because if I don't set those daily, like a weekly goal, I have those two. But. I've noticed with myself that I can easily push off. I don't trust myself to not push off weekly goals into the next week. I'll make those weekly goals go into two weeks sometimes and just keep telling myself like, oh, well, you worked on this, this and this. It's okay." So I had to really nail down specific things that I have to do. Get those things done. If I finish them with enough time, take a break or do something else. Yeah. Okay, so I have a list. All right. And, uh, <laughs> it's, well, are we going like two weeks no list? I don't know. I think I've mentioned list. lists before. On the, I think I like had someone else's list. But anyway, what you just said <laughs> is one of the things that is number one on my list for helping people who are trying to transition from being full-time at another job and making on the side. And it has a lot to do with what you said about pushing projects off and how that can really set you back. And it can set you back in multiple ways because it can set you back emotionally. So if you are if you have a goal set and it, it's too lofty and you can't complete it, it can be sort of devastating for your self-esteem and your productivity. So I often recommend to people that are starting out that have a full-time job, have a family, have a lot of things going on, but they want to have a maker business on the side, is to sort of set project goals in the beginning that aren't overwhelming like find a small project that you can do and complete because it will really help you feel better about what you're doing if you can complete something that's simple and then once you realize how much time it's going to take you you can realistically set goals in terms of other projects that are larger when there's more work that you need to do so simple successes will lead you to the ability to manage larger projects later. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I I see a lot of people that like they want to start a business, for example, like they'll see, you know, that I make jewelry and it seems very simple. It seems like an easy thing to do. And so they'll try to do it, but they're immediately thrown off by their failures in the beginning. Right. So sort of set small goals You know, like maybe I'm going to make five necklaces or I'm going to make five cutting boards this week or I'm going to try to make one video this week. You know, do something like that. And then once you have that success, you can build on it from there because it's really easy to sort of start to hate the thing that you're supposed to love. And I tell this to people a lot. And it's also really great to have a part-time job or a full-time job because then the making stuff is actually something that you look forward to after work. Whereas when you become full-time like me, it becomes work. Like the stuff that's supposed to be fun becomes work. So I think it's really okay for the people listening out there to know that you can have a regular job and you can still be a maker. And the stuff that you're making is still valuable and important. And it's actually kind of nice to have that extra income because you don't have to stress as much. Yeah, very true. I think for me, the the honest truth, though I love making and, you know, I make a lot of different things, whether it be videos, robots, food. I like making food, too. Um, for me, the biggest thing is my long term goal is not to make robots forever. Right. If I if I wanted to do that, I could. And I have plans to make a lot of different things. So it's not like the robots are the only thing. But for me, the making is my release. I just so happen to make something that other people potentially would purchase. Um, Like teaching is my is my 
passion. I love talking to people and helping people learn, just opening their minds. So, you know, for me, it's all I'm always going to have this struggle. I'll never be 100 percent dedicated to either thing. I'm just always going to be passionate about the things that I do and making different things is one of those things. So I have to find a way to fit both of them in my life so that I can feel uh, complete. I guess if that's that's the that's the most eloquent way I can say it without getting emotional, (laughs) without getting emotional. Okay, so another thing that I have on my list in terms of time management is being okay with saying no. So a lot of times when we're we're trying to turn a profit as a maker, you will have people ask you to do projects. And sometimes those projects can be so large that they take over everything else that you're doing. And for the longest time, I would say yes to, to anything, like any mm-hmm. job that came my way, because you know I needed money and I just figured everything's an opportunity. And there are a lot of opportunities out there, so don't shut the door on an opportunity. But be okay with saying no. Like for example, for a couple of years, I had this client that would hire me to make Christmas ornaments that had their logo on it right around the holidays and they would always place their order really late so that I would have to rush it and I would have to make like a thousand ornaments which is essentially like making a thousand necklaces because the process for me is the same and so Mm -hmm. what would happen is it would take away all of the free time I had around the holidays to either promote my work or to do custom orders for regular customers and so even though I was making a large chunk of money from that one specific order, I could have actually made more money in the long term by just, you know, promoting for Christmas and doing individual orders for people, which I actually enjoy doing more. So it took me a couple of years before I realized it was okay to say no to certain jobs. So yeah. that's sort of something important in terms of time management, be able to prioritize and realize what's more important. And at least, even if it's not about the money, like we talked about earlier, I mean, we're makers because we are driven to create and that's what sort of makes us who we are and makes us whole and makes us happy for whatever reason. And so you want to make sure that you're staying true to what you want to do and that you have time to make the things that you want to make to stay happy. So be okay with saying no. That came up for me not too long ago. I had, um, I got a quote for a job where what they wanted me to do was come in and like refinish their tables. It was a bar down the street and they wanted me to come in and refinish some of their outdoor tables. And yes, I can do that, but I hate refinishing. I hate finishing in general. I hate refinishing even more. First of all, you get to sand everything a lot, which is not fun. And then you get to spray finish, which is also not fun. And so this job would have taken me several days. I would have had to get up very early, get over there, like accomplish all this stuff before they open for the day. I had to do it on site because there was no way I was going to be able to haul that stuff back here. And even if I could, there was nowhere to put it. And so I just, even though, yeah, I could have used the money, but I had to turn it down because I realized I was going to hate it. Mm. I can think of something else to do with my time that will make money. Like this is not the only way to make money. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. I think you have to be very strategic. Like it causes you to use all of your brain cells. There's no way that you can do um, what we do. And just like when you have a job, a, a regular nine to five, and that's all you have to do, you can turn it on when you walk in. Some jobs require you to be focused require you to be dialed in, but then some of them don't. You could be on autopilot. And if your day is already scripted for you or you have meetings you have to go to and you're not really the, you know, primary driver of those situations, then you can float in and out of a you can daydream through a meeting. You know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? You can daydream through, I don't know, whatever else you fill in the blank. But when you have, you know, number one, a full time thing that you're doing that is making You can't daydream. (laughs) You can't float in and out of it. Like it requires you to be on all the time. But even if you're someone like me who does, you know, both the full time job, which requires me to be on and then come home and then work on something different, which requires you to be on. It takes a lot. And it is I mean, a lot of it is it's fun because I enjoy doing it. I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. Um, But also the level of stress that it can create. If you don't pay attention to that, your work gets sloppy life gets sloppy, you get sloppy. So, you know, just thinking about not only the time management aspect, but the viability aspect. And is this a viable thing for me? If it's not, then get yourself a regular nine to five, do that and call it a day. Yeah. And just a note for anybody out there, that is not a reason to like beat yourself up. Mm -mm. Like it is okay to, 
at least you tried. I mean, think of how many people are out there who have this, you know, people dream about all kinds of things and most people never try them. Most people never, ever give it a shot. Yeah, I mean, remember me. Let's not forget my story about how my dream was to be a painter. You know, I wanted to be Picasso or Frida Kahlo or whatever. And I opened up that art gallery and failed miserably and literally lost everything that I had. Right. But I didn't beat myself up about it too much. I mean, I guess I did at the time, but I got over it and I went and got a regular nine to five job. You know, and I waited tables and I got promoted to bar manager and I did all of that. And then I started making on the side, which is what we're saying. And, you know, it was like my release. It was my happy place. I could go and make stuff. And I remembered that I was still an artist, despite what my job was as a cocktail waitress or whatever. Yeah. And then, you know, I would wear the, the necklaces into work and then people started buying them. And it got to the point where I was able to quit that other job eventually. But there was a, a quite a long time period where I was doing both. I was working nights at the at the bar and I was making stuff in the afternoons, you know, and you just got to remember that happiness is what's important and you got to pay your bills and you got to take care of yourself. Yeah. Yes. And hopefully it'll work out. And also quality work is important. So thinking about it from a time management perspective, if you're saying that you're going to do something and whatever it is that you say you're going to do doesn't come out quality, nobody's going to want it anyway. So thinking about how can I get this done in the most efficient way so that I'm not wasting time, but also I'm not wasting materials. I'm not coming out with garbage products that people aren't going to want. So if you say that you need X amount of time, factor in a little bit of extra time so that you can make those fine tunes and make it a better product. And if you feel like you don't need as much time, then see, okay, if I finish this, how can I get something else done? Or maybe I just say, I'm going to stop here and go take a break and go work on something else or go just be happy, play video games. I don't know. You know how much I would love to play video games? (laughs) Oh my goodness. That's how I wind down at night, though. I, oh, my goodness. I play games on my iPad, and there's going to be a recommendation when we do the recommendations later. I have a, a certain period of time at night where I play a game, and then I try to draw something because drawing is actually really relaxing for me, and I do it on my iPad. But, yeah, it's really important to have you time. Yeah, I don't and have to so, And I, that. you know, it's so hard for us, actually, to really explain the full extent of what it's like for time management because i don't think anyone on this podcast has children right no we don't yeah so there's so many makers out there that it's i mean you have to factor in a third yes you know entire world of taking care of your children at the same time which i feel sort of bad that we don't have anyone that can represent that yeah. you know perspective because that's a whole nother thing that's like a full-time job no, right that, there so if that you is... have a full-time job and you have kids and you're trying to be a maker you literally are working three jobs yes yeah. and so you have to have to find at least an hour for yourself every day where you can you know the kids are in bed and you can just turn your brain off and do something relaxing yeah. and i think video games are great for although us. i will point out that all three of us are married and have been for at least a while so yeah, we do know what married, it's like yeah. to share your life with yes, someone very yeah. true. even though they're not children <laughs> <laughs> i've been with my husband for 12 years and we have two dogs which are like children i like to think of them as my children but i do not have to drive them to school or pick them up so or buy yes. them clothes so. right yes my heart goes out to the families <laughs> out there yeah oh absolutely we salute you makers yeah. hustle salutes you that's right but kind of coming back to what jeff said right at the beginning jeff what you said was i wrote it down that's how good it was oh it was good it was good that makes me feel better i thought i was just <laughs> talking nonsense up until you said that no no no, no. <laughs> it was not nonsense at all you said uh decide what's important take care of yourself your family your significant other first that's the yes. number one rule. oh but that's yeah. i've only learned that through experience now oh yeah i've only learned that through experience because when i first got into this thing boy i could work for hours and i would ignore everything, mm-hmm. everything. and then uh suddenly you have this person going hey yeah you remember that <laughs> marriage thing that we did yeah you owe me some of your time Yep. Yeah. And it's definitely a partnership. Finding the balance there is really tricky. Yeah. Because your work will suffer. You not only will you suffer, but your work will suffer. And and if, like if you will catch yourself having these thoughts about like, man, if only I wasn't 
Uh, <laughs> if only I didn't have this other person here who needed <laughs> all this stuff. All I can get so much more stuff done. And then you realize, oh, wait, they are like my emotional support. And they also, at least in my case, my wife has a full-time job. She works a nine-to-five, and that keeps the lights on during times yeah. when I'm not bringing in as much as I need to be. Yeah, I'm in the exact same position. Yeah. I My business has its highs and lows. And like I've said before, I'm in a slow period right now. I mean, business is down right until the holiday season starts to pick up. And so, you know, I'm hugely dependent on my partner to help me pay the bills in times like this. So... Yeah, I'm I'm eternally grateful to him yeah. for all of his support. And I kind of think, yeah, I would you know what? I would be able to get an incredible amount of work done until the first of the month when I have to pay the rent. <laughs> and then not so much. Mm. No, I think when you when you're working on something and you know, you have a lot of different a lot of different things that call that can pull your attention so quickly like other than just the relationship, that bill those bills and you know different obligations that don't go away they don't go away like student loans they don't care if you have an up or a down period credit card payments they don't care if you have an up or a down payment down period so it's like it's very easy if you don't take care of yourself for those things to overwhelm you and then your work suffers Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's and it'll happen before you know it trust me i know (laughs) And then when you start to get older, like me, like your energy levels start to drop. Like I used to be able to work like hour, like 12 hours straight, mm. you know, like not even have to, you know, take naps or anything or eat or whatever. And the older you get, the more difficult it gets to sort of like channel that energy. So you really do need to plan your days, I think, to get the most effective yeah. work done. Yeah. And it's and it's OK to not know how to do that at first because yeah. it's it's a constant process of adaptation like Mm -hmm. you find something that sort of works and you run with that and then you find a way that it could be better and so you change it and you run with that and there's bumps in the road and sometimes you have setbacks and you know it's it's life is messy yeah i've I've, one thing that i've thought about a long time um is because my ultimate goal and i want to have an episode on this but like thinking about from a five year perspective, where would your if you can have if you could do something right now that would change how you operate in five years, what would that five year plan look like? Right. And for me, because I I make and then I also teach and I want both of those things to have a humongous part of my life. But I want that to instead of me having to work nine to five, I would like to be able to my nine to five consist of teaching and making. You get what I'm saying? So that way I don't have to do anything from five to ten and then I can still sleep from ten to whatever it is time. So I think it's so important that you think about how is the most effective way for you to split your time up while at the same time making it sustainable because it's not it's only 24 hours in a day. So how can you make whatever it is that you do sustainable so that you're not sacrificing, you know, money or time with your friends, time with your family, but you're also making money and getting all these things done? That's my biggest challenge. And that's what I want to that's where I'm at right now. How do I do that? So we actually um, Matt Haas, who's been a fan of the show for a while now, he sent a Gary V quote. Well, like a Gary V uh, meme, I guess. We love Gary V. We love Gary V. We do. But uh, the quote was, if you live for weekends and vacations, your shit is broken. (laughs) (laughs) And it's just one of the things that we kind of we sort of touched on it, but not really is it's okay to have a day job. It is. And that's Mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't make your art or you're making any less valuable or any less good. It doesn't make you any less of an artist. It doesn't make you any less of a creative person. But if you get to a point where you dread going to your day job, like you can't get out of bed in the morning, Mm -hmm. that's broken. Mm -hmm. Like that is wrong. You should not feel like that. People are not supposed to feel that way. Right. You want to know something else that I I think about a lot. If you are doing the same thing every day and you complain about it and you're not trying to do something else, whether it's getting another day job or maybe Uh it's you, you know, moving around. I, I feel bad when I go to work and people complain about like, yo, I wish I was doing this or I wish I was doing it. Not even thinking about making, but just something. 
if you're not just take the time, think about what you want to do differently and do something different. Yeah, absolutely. So, there was um there was another Gary V thing actually that I just saw. I think that the title of the video was Do Your Words Match Your Hustle? Which is like, yeah, if you go to work and you're fine and you're content and you know, you you go home and you spend time with your family and you're happy and then you go back to work, great. But if you go to work and you complain, what are you doing to fix it, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, so you're unhappy with that. What are you doing about it? Very true. Because if you're not doing anything about it, it's not going to get better by itself. Nope. I just want to say that when I was in that situation and I was really miserable working in the bar and I, you know, had finally gotten to the point where I was ready to start up a business, it was very terrifying. But one of the things that sort of got me through is weird in a way because it was a quote that I read in some business magazine and I don't even know who said it, but if you're going to start your own business, you have to be prepared to work seven days a week for the first two years. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of helped me in a way because I realized that I was willing to do that kind of work in order to do the kind of work that I loved, if that makes any sense. No, yeah, perfect sense. That seems like a good place to wrap this up. What do you think? Oh, great place to wrap it up. All right. (laughs) I have a recommendation. Yay. (laughs) So super cool listener. Shout out to Hugo. Uh, I'm going to screw up his last name. I know it. But Hugo Van Shockwick. I don't know. I hope I'm saying that right. But if not, he goes by the name S.A. underscore maker and S.A. slash maker on YouTube. And he's super cool. And he was quoting some of the stuff that we said on the podcast on Twitter. And then he reached out to me on Instagram and he made a comment on this photo of this robot that I took at this guy's house that I had visited. And he said, hey, that really reminds me of Machinarium. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, it's this really great game. And I don't know if anybody plays it, but I mentioned earlier that I like to chill out at night and play games. And I like to play really pretty games. And I also really love puzzle games. And Machinarium is a game that you can play on your PC or your iPad or whatever. And it's a robot. And you get to be this little robot that cruises around through this really intense world. And you solve puzzles. And it's so beautifully done. And it's so much fun to play. I can't recommend it enough. And then another shout out to Hugo. Because he sent me a link to his YouTube. And he was saying that, you know, it's it's always cool to meet other artists in the maker community. And this guy made a really incredible performance art piece that's also a maker video in reaction to the Orlando shootings that happened. And we'll put a link to it in our show notes. It's not what you expect. He makes a gun, but the way the video goes is not necessarily what you would expect. And that's all I'm going to say. You should watch it. It's really moving. It's beautifully done. And it's definitely a great intersection of art and the maker community. It's, I I love it. It's great. So thanks so much, Hugo, for reaching out. Really cool stuff. Awesome. All right. So I guess I'll go next. Um, My shout out is to hopefully help somebody who's struggling with the things that I'm struggling with. So as you guys know, I'm making my robots wireless. I'm using a transceiver module called the NRF24 L01, and I'm integrating it with my Arduino. Now, if you were to Google that, transceiver module and look for some type of how to to kind of give you a little bit of guidance. There's a whole bunch of libraries out there. Um, They've updated the library recently, but along with the libraries, there's a whole bunch of how to's and a lot of those how to's are not that clear. They don't give you the type of information that you need to take that basic sketch or basic code and kind of amplify it and do what you want with it. So I found this awesome tutorial. It was very easy to get started. Um, He gives a lot of insight into how, you know, each line works and what it does so that you can kind of do with it what you need to. And this uh, we'll put the link in the in the show notes for the video because it's a very weird name to say is starter kit dot netty go. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Dot edu eu. Sorry. Um, but it's a great tutorial step by step. He breaks it down. You if you wire it correctly and you put this code in, it will automatically work. And then you can go and do with it what you need to. But there's a lot of codes out there that I've tried. And I mean, I'm no rocket science or scientist or anything, but there's a lot of practice ones that I've tried to use that even though I wired it, wired it up exactly the way I was supposed to based on the pictures, based on the visuals, um, it did not work. And it was frustrating. 
And just trying to learn from that is a lot more difficult. So if you could find you a good tutorial that really walks you, it's not even a lot of YouTube videos. It was really no clear YouTube videos that give you the different types of things that I felt like I needed. Um, so definitely I want to recommend that just in case you're struggling like I have been. So I have two recommendations for this week. The first is Jocko Whatever, who I've talked about before. He published a video on Make Magazine's channel where he made a concrete USB hub. Like he took a USB hub, he took the plastic case off of it, and then he put it in concrete with like a, a wooden base. Because that way, I, I, if you have ever used these little USB hubs, you know that they can kind of slide around your desk and he wanted something heavier. So he, he actually cast the thing in concrete. And it was met with a bunch of really, really negative comments and dislikes. And like it has almost as many thumbs down as it has thumbs up. Which is weird because it's it's a really well put together video, and even if you don't like the project personally, you can at least appreciate that effort went into it. But anyway, the cool thing about this is it kind of sparked this community challenge. So now a whole bunch of people are making their own concrete USB hubs, and there are going to be a lot of videos coming out about this very soon. Cool. So, yeah, so keep an eye out for that because that is actually it's really cool. Like the community came together around this like negative experience, and it's not like Jocko was particularly upset about it or anything. He just said, "Yeah, not everybody likes everything. But people kind of rallied around this and went, no, you know what? That's not how we treat each other. So now everyone is making concrete USB hubs, and I may be able to contribute. We'll see. Awesome. I want one now. I, yeah. I do hate it that my things move around on my desk like that. I would love one of those. Right. Maybe. So you, you, you encase it in a big hunk of concrete, and it won't yeah. do that. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> so the second recommendation is a guy named Billy McCord. Now, Billy McCord reached out to me through Facebook, and he asked for critique of one of his videos, because this is something we've talked about before on the show. So what I did was, rather than try to talk him through what I thought could be done with the video, I asked for his permission, I downloaded the video, and then I did a recut with a voiceover explaining why I did everything that I did. And he saw it, and he thought that it was just the coolest thing ever, and so he gave me permission to publish it. So I'm going to have a link to the playlist of his original and my recut. And I, again, I want this to be an idea that catches on. I want people to be able to critique each other and realize that there is a constructive way to give criticism and that criticism helps everybody grow as long as it is delivered in a way that addresses the work and not the person. Mm. Yes. Yes. So before we sign off, where can everybody find you? All right. Well, as always, you know, if you're looking to reach out and let me know what you think about something that I said, whether it's good or bad, because I like both, um, you can find me on Facebook. On Facebook at more four with the four being a number four, not an F. And then you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at more underscore four, regular F. And you can find me at Surly Amy on Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon. And you can find Surly Ramix Jewelry at SurlyRamix.com. You can find me at One Car Workshop on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also find me at onecarworkshop.com, or you can search Bill Lavolsi on YouTube or Make Magazine. Speaking of which, by the time this podcast comes out, I should have a new article out about Pat Lap. So go check makezine.com. It should be in the blog section, so go check that out. It ought to be pretty good. Awesome. Way to get a last-minute plug in, Bill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout-out to Pat. Shout-out to Pat. So that's it for this week. If you're listening to the show on iTunes, please take a moment to leave us a rating and tell us what you think. I know a lot of you have not done this because we have about seven reviews on iTunes. They're all five stars, but we have hundreds and hundreds of listeners, so somebody's slacking. <laughs> please go on iTunes, leave us a rating, tell us what you think. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Makers Hustle. If you want to ask a question, give feedback, suggest a show topic, or suggest a guest host, please send an email to info at makershustlepodcast.com or hit us up on social media. Once again, thank you so much for listening. And while this show might be over, the hustle never stops. We'll be back next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. See you later. All right. Good stuff. What about you, Bill? I just, my brain flew away. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, okay. <laughs> I, I was looking at you. I'm like, Bill, <laughs> you look like you wanted to say something, but I didn't know if you wanted to say it. No, I just, uh, yeah, I just completely lost my train of thought. It derailed and fell over and burst into flames. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.